I think we're on. I'm Jake. This is Mike, Orange Cactus Coffee, and we decided we're going to review the crew for you today. And we're going to go pretty in-depth and in detail. It's going to be a little longer video. We've got a lot of information that we want to share with you. So hang with us. I think you're going to enjoy what we've got to say about it. It's not just our thoughts, but kind of the thoughts of the community. Yeah, absolutely. So when we first got this, we wanted to give ourselves some time to get used to it. And now we've done that. What the crew is, if you're not familiar, we'll just give a quick premise about what it does. Um, it really helps you calibrate your grind size. And so the idea behind it is that when you're brewing, you want your particles or your grind to be all of a consistent size. Even the best grinders, the commercial grade grinders, are gonna have what they call fines, real small particles, and boulders, <laughs> real large particles. And those are both gonna either give you a little bit of a sourness or a little bit of a bitterness to your cup. Proof came along and they said, many are trying to perfect the grinder, um, but we're gonna perfect the grind. And what they did is they came up with this screen system. These are sieves here and they have different micron um, holes in them so that you can take two of them and put your coffee through the series of chambers of screens and sift out the boulders and the fines. When we say micron, Mike, they're, they're numbered so you can tell, you yeah. can see. And some and the proof comes with different packages, right? It's not just you have to get the 12. You can kind of pick the numbers and you don't have to get that many screens. Is that correct? Yeah, there's three different models currently that they offer. They offer a basic for 50 bucks, a two screen set, which just comes with a 400 and an 800 micron uh, screens. And then you can get the six uh, sieve set and then you can get this guy, the 12. Uh, the six is 90 bucks and the full set, the 12 is 130. So the larger the number, mm -hmm. the bigger the holes yeah. in the screen and the, the smaller the number, the smaller the holes in the screen yeah. from 200 to 1100 in this set. Exactly. So previously there was never really a method, especially at home, that you could um, calibrate your grind and calibrate your grinder and actually know how much of uh, the perfect particles am I putting in the brew cup? Is there too many boulders? Are there too many fines? You'd have kind of pictures and descriptions and you make it coarse as sea salt or mm -hmm. fine as pepper or powdered sugar or granulated sugar. There was no way to understand yourself what kind of grind you were using other than going off of just a, a guess or even communicating that to other people. You know, if you had the same grinder, you could say what number you use, but even then there's going to be inconsistencies because of the burrs. Are they worn out? Are they new? So really what the crew system is, it's not just a sifter. It's not just simply a device that's going to give you a better cup. It will do that, but it's a tool that opens up almost endless possibilities for creating recipes or where your grinder uh, grinds the most optimal particles for any particular brew method. Yeah, it's not just dealing with one element. I mean, it, it, it you know, we talked about the simple one, two, three instructions. It makes it seem like it's just one element that's really being dissected, which is the grind. Mm -hmm. That grind gives you a lot of different options, not just, hey, I've got a better grind than my filter. Absolutely right. So we're gonna demo it. We're gonna show you how it works. And, and then we're also gonna show you um, some little tricks that we found valuable. Hacks. Little hacks. Hacks. We're gonna we think will help it. you uh, enjoy it more and, and then kind of give you a review and an overview of the pros and cons, should you get one. Is the crew worth the coin? And if it is, which one should I get? Get the coffee? Get the coffee. We're drinking a honey processed El Salvadorian single origin from Elevate Coffee in Phoenix. Woo! So how it works. <clears throat> <laughs> so the way it works, we're gonna show you how you set it up. There's basically, uh, you got these three aluminum trays. Uh, one for the bottom and two that hold the uh, the sifters. Um, so for the pour over method we're going to demo today, we're going to use the recommended screens, which is the 800 and the 400. I found a little trick that helps um, insert the screens. So we're going to start with the bottom, the lower level and put in the four. If you put the corner in uh, first and then kind of um, bend it a little bit and put the other corner in, so that your, your corners are in and then you kind of just push your thumbs together um, to the middle to get the, uh, the rest of it seated. And then your third corner, you kind of tuck that one in. It, it takes a little getting used to. It is a little trickier than I thought it would be. Yeah, and then you can look at the bottom and see that your, your little rubber seal is set properly. 
So after messing with it a few times, you'll figure it out. But start with the corners and then kind of meet it in the middle. Did you get it? I got it. No, that was good. Yeah, pretty good, huh? When you first, if you don't do it that way, you'll be there for five minutes. Um, or at least I was. So we have the bottom that catches the fines, and then we put the smaller screen, in this case the 400, on top of that. And That's where your perfect grind is gonna go. It's gonna fall through, yep, and then the, uh, the big screen, the 800, on top. Where your boulders are gonna get caught up. Where we're gonna stop the boulders. Stop the boulders. The next thing that you do when you first get it is you calibrate your grinder. And so the way they recommend doing that is taking 10 grams, uh, and, and if you have kind of an old uh, coffee or something that's not super special that you're you're willing to waste use that so take 10 grams Start where you normally would for any particular brew method So if you're doing a pour over start with the eight and four pick your setting grind up the 10 grams Sift it and what you're shooting for is that you get a 50 50 split of the fines and the boulders 50 50 by weight or 50 50 by eyeballing it by weight So you'll want to weigh it when you're done. You'll be surprised you will so you run it through you might have way more fines and boulders or vice versa. That'll give you an idea of where you need to take your grinder. The best that we've been able to get down to is about a 25 on average percent loss, if you will, of the total, total grind amount. You are gonna waste or lose a little bit, um, but keep in mind you're losing the fines and the boulders. So particles that normally would either make your cup a little sour or a little bitter. Uh, one recommendation that Krug made is uh, not to add more coffee to get to a desirable yield. In layman's term, desirable yield means if I'm gonna go 23 grams for my 350 cup, Krug is saying, well, if you end up at 17, that's fine. Just use the 17 mm -hmm. grams of the perfectly ground stuff. But I, I like adding more to get up to 23. The logic? The logic behind it makes sense. Um, since we're gonna be using the perfect grind size particles and getting rid of what's uh, the fines and the boulders that's not so good, you're still gonna get a nice extraction, um, which you do. You do get a very nice extraction. However, the ratio, uh, sometimes it's so less, it's kind of a weak cup yeah. in our experience. It's, it's a little weaker cup. Yeah. So you, you do get, I think, a more consistent flavor yeah. from it. It's a good brew. Yeah. It's just weaker. But it's a weaker cup. So I think a good um, balance is, is to split the difference. You don't have to add as much uh, grounds to get to you know a yield to those perfect particles uh, at the end. But if you can come up a little bit, you'll find that even though it's a weaker cup, the flavor is so much stronger that it's uh, it's good to go. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and grind some up, uh, sift it, and brew up a uh, a pour over cup for you. That Watch is this pour. Go. Don't use your hand. Oh, there you go. Maybe use the back. Try again. What do you, we do 23? You 23. Like 20, yeah. It's upside down. Yeah, that's 26. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this needs all over it. That's it. Close enough for government work. 23.1. So today we're doing 23 grams of coffee, at least we're starting with it. Um, we might have to use a little bit more to get the uh, desired end result that we're after. And we're going to use, what, 350 milliliters of water? Yep. For the Barazza Encore, um, I have found that the setting of 10 is really what uh, produces uh, a pretty good result. A, a nice split between boulders and fine, which is a lot finer than I had it. I usually had it around 15, uh, 15, 16. So uh, it's okay to go a little bit uh, finer because we're gonna remove all the fines, the extra fines it produces. Oh. I already made a mess. <laughs> Did you say something? No. Oh, okay, sorry. I'm not talking to you. So go ahead and dump it, yep. Put it on the top layer, kind of spread it across. Nice. Get all that chaff in there. Yeah. <laughs> Put on this uh, nice little wood lid, and um, you shake. I think, uh, I think you might be a little better. I like this. I feel like the gold panner, gold miner, there's gold! The so crew recommends you shake it for how long? For about a minute and a half. Oh. I, I think that's a good starting point. Usually it takes a little longer because um, what we like to do is once we're done shaking it, we're going to take the top layer and run it through the grinder again. A little bit more uh, on the boulders uh, on the top than we do in the fines. So regrind. Regrind. 
Now this isn't a step that Kruv recommends, is it? They actually do. Do they? It's not. What? Is this a step that Kruv recommends? They've recommended it in an interview that I've heard uh, that they, they say you can drop the, uh, the boulders back through. And, and typically when we do this, we get uh, probably another 50% of them um, to go through the sieve, through the screen. There you go. Nice. Well done. Thank you. The other thing you'll notice about the Kruv as we do this, um, it is a little messy. That's good. Yeah, good job. <laughs> Real good. It's usually not quite as messy. It depends on the uh, operator. So a little hard to see, but we do have a fairly decent split between the boulders and the fines after grinding the boulders a second time. So let's brew it up and see how it tastes. The brew method we're using today is blue bottle stripper. One thing that I have found to help a little bit is uh, when you go to pour it in, usually if you just try to dump it and tap it, you're gonna get kind of grounds even. Because some of the fines get stuck on the bottom of that mm -hmm. there. So if you have a little brush or even a little spoon, just something to help kind of just uh, ease it in. It's a good job. Now, do you count the coffee that ends up on the scale? Coming in at 17 grams. So we lost six grams. We lost six out of 23 grams, which is probably a little more than I would like. Um, so I would regrind a little bit more, maybe five grams, and, and get another three grams to get it up to 20. Tear it, and you can brew it. I have also found that it's not quite as active when you remove the fines and the boulders, and it's probably the fines that are that are giving me all that activity. Now one thing that we've come across that is really cool, people are, are not just throwing these away. Uh, and in fact, they're finding ways to use them. Um, one method you can do is, especially for a pour, where it's layer it. You can put your boulders uh, in first, followed by your perfect grind, and then on top, use your fines. And the idea behind that is, um, since the boulders are at the bottom, you're, you're not gonna run the risk of over extracting because they'll be in contact with more water longer. Um, and you have your fines on top so that you're only getting uh, a little less extraction with them. And people are saying the cup is, is improved and there's no waste. And, and I think that's really the key uh, to the value of the crew. It's a tool. It's a tool that allows you to manipulate the grind in, in a way that hasn't really been available before, especially on a consumer level. So there we have it, our crew cup. Yeah, it's actually really good. Nice. Some of the pros and cons, as you can see the pros, uh, probably the biggest pro is that the crew gives uh, the specialty coffee community a way to communicate grind size, a way that they can specify a, a recipe, a roaster, or even a barista championship can say, I've used these two sieves, these screens, and I've used this coffee with this method and with this water, and, and you could go home and, and replicate it. Mm -hmm. Never before, you know, at the consumer level, have you been able to do that. Um, and it basically, the second valuable thing it does is it helps you calibrate your grinder. It helps you understand where your grinder produces its best uh, particle size at for any given brew method. It's simple, it's easy to use, uh, and it's designed very well. It's gonna last. The screens, um, the food grade aluminum, everything about it uh, is done very well and it looks nice too. I can think of another pro is that just as a, as a consumer, it puts you in control of your of your grind. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you you can really see what it's supposed to look like. You can you can touch it. You can look at it. You're like, okay, this is the grind. This is this what, what it's I'm supposed after. to be. At. Yeah, this yeah. is what I'm chasing. Uh, one of the things I found valuable too is after learning a little bit about my grinder and a brew method and, and learning about what a good particle size is. Even when I don't use the crew. Um, I'm finding that I'm able to dial in the grinder a little bit better mm -hmm. and, and get a little nicer cup. Some of the cons um, that we would say to it, it's messy. As you can see, um, you kind of get grinds everywhere. a little bit of everywhere. Yeah. You get better at it. You are going to use a little bit more coffee if you want to get the same strength cup. In our experience, you are going to throw away some of the fines and some of the boulders, but if you're already investing in a scale and a grinder and water and you're already chasing that that awesome perfect cup each and every morning you might quickly kind of overlook that 
uh, just because of how how much it does improve the cup, how much clarity it gives the cup. You know, another con is that it, it adds a few minutes to your morning routine already. So for those of us who are constantly, you know, trying to promote specialty coffee to folks who are just give me my cake up, I just want to drop it, click it, push it, set it, go. This adds a whole new layer mm -hmm. to it. How much time would you say you spend uh, in addition to a pour over mic using the crew? How long does it take add to it? I would say on average, once you kind of get comfortable with it, you're still looking at five to seven minutes. Now mm -hmm. that includes the setup, the use, uh, re-grinding the boulders, and then at the end, washing it. Mm -hmm. um, so you're adding that to, to your morning routine. Uh, and for me, really where I've enjoyed using it is with a new coffee or especially a, a nice uh, specialty offering, you know. Um, you can really taste what's extra special about it or you can really make the flavors pop. Make it pop and then you don't have to, you know, choose not to use it the next day and realize how much better it is with the crew and regret that you didn't use it. <laughs> <laughs> Should everybody you get the 12 screen one? I think um, what we would recommend, the two screen, which comes with the eight and four, is gonna cover pretty much most of your home brew methods, your yeah. pour over, even your French press, um, because you're removing the fines. And so you can go a little bit finer with the French press. And, and you're gonna find that it improves the cup and, and gives you a nice even particle size that you don't need that many more screens. Now, if you wanna get a little more detailed with it, the six screen, I think, would, would um, be all that you need. Um, you really don't have to go beyond that. It gives you a little bit wider range and a few more um, variables in the middle. Yeah. And that one comes in at $90 currently. Uh, the 12 screen, the, the big one at 130, I think really only a coffee shop that wants to calibrate their high-end grinders, you know, for espresso and, and pour over and, and whatnot, that they would see the most value from the 12 screen. If you're on the fence about it, go ahead and just get the two screen. And I do believe you'll be able to buy additional screens too, if you decide um, hey, I want I want a few more. I've enjoyed it. I want to use different brew methods or play around with it I think you can purchase those additional screens at some point I've heard that they're making even now more than what's offered in the 12 because there's demand for it uh -huh. So if you're looking to improve your cup, you're chasing that elusive dragon. You will love the crew What's the magic question Jake? Is the crew worth the coin? It is absolutely worth the coin and it's worth the time and it's worth the mess Maybe not every day but certainly some days. Thanks, crew. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment, question. If there's anything else that you wanna know about the crew, hit us up. Um, we're still learning, we're still growing, and we're still experimenting. We appreciate it. We're still learning how to turn the scale off. Is it even on? Is it running? Yeah. Oh, okay, I'm ready. <clears throat>